<clears throat> First of all, thank you. Thank you for all these uh, events. It's incredibly interesting and I think it's also very productive to share our approach that is similar in many points. I've been in Toronto last year and uh, I was impressed by how far they go on open data or social innovation. It was absolutely uh, fascinating for me. Uh, I feel a bit frustrating and I want to be uh, a little provocative too. Uh, I feel frustrating because uh, uh, we all agree about uh, many things. So we have to invest on people and education, cities are not technology, uh, city should attract people to stay, uh, to live uh, in a cultural, in a rich and cultural environment uh, with many things to do, but they also have to work, of course, in the city. Um, and I don't know how to, to solve this puzzle. And so I'd like to present some trade-off or some problem I'm facing in my daily work with a smart city in Italy. Uh, the first trade-off is uh, maintenance versus innovation. Uh, one of the main problems I see in uh, um, managing the funds or project of the smart city is the difference between building a new road so, or a broadband infrastructure from one side, so investing in physical things, and from the other side building a social streets, for example. So investing in a network of people doing new things that are extremely important because maybe they can uh, uh, create a new way of distributing food, for example, and it's something that it's happening uh, um, uh, very often in Bologna and Turin, for example. So we are reinventing the food chain by using internet and basically connecting people. So it's better to invest in roads and that of course cost a billion of euro or investing in a new network of people. And the, the first provocative idea is imagine how much we can do if we switch the all investment we place for road to people. So billion of euro uh, for people creating new way of uh, doing things. That would be absolutely massive because you know, with 1 billion euro you create, uh, 1.5 billion euro you create a new port in Bari. With 1.5 billion euro you create a whole new economy in Italy and also probably in Europe. Uh, that's the first point. And that's, that's important because uh, I've been in China a couple of times and they are building their smart city basically driven by efficiency. So they measure and they want to do things cheaper and faster, cheaper and faster, because they are facing big problems of urbanization, etc. But that's not uh, productive in the long term or probably also in the middle term because productivity has a, 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 it it has a um, <clears throat> decreasing marginal uh, productivity. So you can be productive, productive, efficient, efficient, efficient to a certain point when uh, you basically your uh, slope is, is going down and uh, that's, that stops. So you are investing a lot of, lot of money probably in something that is not so productive. On the other way, Europe is uh, talking, Europe and probably also Canada and the, the Western country, we are talking a lot about holistic approach, social innovation, but at the end of the day, it's nothing. Or it's something that uh, probably would have been uh, created uh, um, even without the public's intervention. So from one side, uh, in the east, uh, we have this very fast track of uh, physical and uh, uh, very efficiency driven development. From the other side, we have this humanistic approach, but it's complicated to, to basically uh, understand how it impacts our society. And then uh, the other trade-off is the measurement. We have a big problem in, uh, with the definition and measurement. Uh, with definition, why? Because um, if uh, smart is uh, a new technology or a new infrastructure, okay, we can put in place different uh, um, monitoring uh, models so that it's quite uh, uh, well known and it works. Uh, 
CO2 uh, reducing emission, uh, conge reducing congestion and traffic in the cities. It's everything we are really uh, used to, 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 to this measurement. But if we want to understand how a new, uh, for example, healthcare system based on connecting people is uh, uh, changing how our society, that's much more difficult. And so I think that we tend to go on the first part of the smart city because it's easier. Uh, and, but we have to think about impact measurement. And my proposal is uh, to uh, look at how Wikipedia works. So we can maybe try to invent a wiki measurement where all the stakeholders collaborate in the measurement of project. Uh, I, um, Paolo notes, because we were working on the, on the smart city platform, that it's how our uh, dreams, in a way. So uh, bringing all the stakeholders, the public administration, citizen, the people who's working in the project, that uh, can uh, measure the evolution of the project. Not just the public administration or the financial system, but everybody. Also citizen, so wiki measurement. Um, the last problem, uh, I think this is the, the, the biggest one, but the last one is smart city versus product city. <coughs> uh, we are building product city. Cisco is selling uh, the same system to different cities in the world, and we are investing in products. Uh, there is also some experience in Italy where the public uh, founded project for the city, a lot of million euro, invested in new technology, uh, for example, versus um, towards Cisco or IBM, and then IBM developed the new smart city solution to sell to the public. So we are going to pay the things both times. And that's, that's actually a big problem. Uh, that's one side. The other side, that's the trade-off, is uh, it's impossible to create small personalized uh, solution that can scale up, because that's the other side of the coin. Uh, so we, we cannot uh, leave uh, all the decision and the power to Cisco, but we cannot uh, also invest in small, little, tiny solution for Bologna, Ferrara, uh, Copenhagen, and uh, so I, I don't know how to, to solve this problem, but that's absolutely something we have to take uh, into our minds. And the last remark is about data. Uh, we are all talking about data, but how can we prevent the centralization of power, data power in the smart city? Because I have this uh, dub that uh, we are building a very, very intelligent dashboard for the major, but you know, citizens are not, uh, uh, they don't access this information. So they, we are not building consensus. We are building more authoritarian. And uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the long run, probably very, very uh, efficient based authoritarian society where few people has all the information and the other, nothing. And that's not democracy, that's absolutely the contrary. And that's how Chinese, uh, Chinese government works. And uh, you know, people it's uh, usually willing to, uh, to, 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 to live their freedom for efficiency. And that's, that's I think, uh, absolutely the European way of thinking. And where, as European or Western country, we can um, provide our contribution to the world. It's better a more complicated or less efficient society, but democratic, or a very data-driven, absolutely efficient society, but not democratic. So the last three uh, provocative uh, sentences are stop funding infrastructure, stop funding technology. Technology are not so useful at the end of the day, so stop funding technology. And stop funding coordination, because coordination, it's uh, impossible. So we've been working a lot uh, in Italy in the last year, uh, building a, a coordination infrastructure for smart city. It doesn't work. It doesn't work because, uh, you know, major, high, we, we, they say before in the previous panel. So we probably better to focus on network, connection, uh, and commons, building commons. So building uh, 
uh, digital commons, building knowledge that can be um, used in different places, but not thinking of top-down coordination. That's, thank, thank you, you. Lorenzo.